Yo, what's up? It's Josh. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a female hyper pop song just like this. That song you just heard is actually an idea that I recently cooked up with my frequent collaborator, Eva Grace. We have a couple songs out. If you don't already know her, definitely make sure to go check her out and show her some love. The first thing that I want to talk about are the vocals. And in Hyperpop, there are a couple things that you can do to really help your vocals stand out. On the actual vocal channel, we just got auto-tune going on. Uh, retune speed set to zero, just to give it that really kind of Charlie XCX type tune sound. Set the key of the song. And then over in this section, we're affecting the formant and the throat length. And this is something that they do a lot in Hyperpop to either get that, that low kind of tone or that shit monkey type thing just kind of depends on whatever sauce you're trying to make the jambalaya with you know what i'm saying i'm about to mess with the throat a little bit and just notice how it affects the tone of the sound and it goes like another thing you can also do in these kind of tracks is transpose the vocal up or down This is something really useful for guys to do because if your voice is really low and that's where you like to sing or rap in and then you pitch it up, it might sound pretty cool. After that, we've got the stock Ableton Overdrive doing some light drive, little bit of tone, dry wet set to 33%. Let's listen to what that does. Kind of just brings the vocal up to the center and gives it a little texture and grit, which I think is really dope in these hyper pop type vocals. Then we got the NS1 plugin, kind of just acting as a gate, taking out some of the room noise. You could also just use the Ableton gate for this and adjust the threshold to what sounds good to you. As far as the processing goes, it's actually really light on this one. I didn't really have to do much. Kind of just squashed it like crazy with the CLA 76. You know what I'm saying? Just turn that input all the way up. It's not always good to compress this much, but I thought in this case, I don't know, it just kind of sounded good. And that's a plug. There are no rules to this music shit. You got to just go with your gut, whatever feels good to you. Then we got some EQ8, taking out some of the lows and the mids, just to let those highs really shine through. Then we got some OTT, which is just really tightening up the sound. Without it, it just really sounds boxy. And so my thought process was I want the vocal to be brought right in front of my face and be really present and bright. And then we got some basic reverb and delay going on. The first one's being sent to this little room reverb. I just wanted the vocal to kind of sit in a space and have a little bit of dimension. And so this is what that's doing. This is what the reverb just sounds like by itself. See, nothing big, not this big, huge pop thing, a Dell type thing, just a nice little room reverb. And then after that, we've got an eighth note delay, little filter, filter, taking out some of those highs and lows. And then I added a little bit of reverb to it just so it wasn't dry. And here's what that sounds like. I like to put an eighth note delay on vocals sometimes just to give it a little bit more space and texture. An apology for the things I do ain't now with me don't want to make after the vocals, I want to move on to the instruments. And in this case, all the instruments are kind of just acting as a simple bass type riff. And so we've got a couple layers doing this. The first one's just a regular saw type bass that I made in Serum. Super simple. We got it up two octaves, up two octaves. But then the little trick here is to make the semitones on one of the oscillators up seven. And what this does is create, in terms of theory, a one and a five. And this just gives you a really thick, kind of rocky, punkish type tone. <laughs> Oh yeah. So for effects, got some distortion, drive, tube, all the way up, and a little multiband compression. Which, if you don't know, you just come into the compressor and turn on this multiband. Then a little bit of EQ, just taking out the lows and highs. I'm taking out the lows because I know that the sub is going to occupy those frequencies. And then utility, a little bit of width, and then this big goat plugin, kind of just shaping the distortion a little bit. Then another EQ, just to once again take out those lows, tame a little bit of the highs. The second layer we have is the sub. Super simple right here. We just got the basic shape sub, one voice of unison, detuned all the way down. But the real sauce here is to go right here, to that little pin tool, and then add harmonics to the sub. And this just really helps it cut through. And then, yeah, no effects going on. And then just the EQ, making sure it's just those sub frequencies. Then the last layer we've got is this 800 dB stab. 
I think this is from the 100 Gex pack right over here. If you don't already have that, make sure to check that out. It has a lot of really cool sounds that even if you don't want to use yourself, you can tweak them and make them your own. And here's what that sounds like. Really nothing to it, just a little bit of EQ, taking out some lows and the highs just to help it sit better in the mix. And after that, we've got the drums. And here's what those sound like. On this one, it's just a really simple groove. It really just comes down to sound selection for the kick. We've got this 2U kick, also from the 100 Gex pack. And then we got the 26 Gex snare, which once again, you guessed it, from the Gex pack. And then we also have it layered with the help snare, which if you guessed it, is from the 100 Gex pack. I think it's clear that I really like this pack. And then after that, we've just got this help hi-hat. Kind of just doing a basic trap pattern. I wanted to keep the pocket really simple for this one and not go too crazy because I wanted it to just almost be like a really commercial type pop sound, but have that hyper pop kind of flair. Now, the last thing I want to talk about are some arrangement tricks and techniques. And the first one is to use effects on your master chain. First thing I've got is this Saturn plugin doing this lo fi ad preset. And here's what that sounds like. You can kind of tell it gives it like a bit crushed, just kind of like messed up sound. And then I knew I wanted it to be filtered. And so I added another instance of Saturn with the tape mids preset. And here's what that adds. Kind of sounds like if you were playing something on an old boombox speaker or an iPhone speaker. Really just takes away those highs and lows. And then I automated both of these to decrease to zero right before the hook. And this kind of creates this effect of whole thing whipping you and just hitting you in the face, you know? And then to help the transition, just added a big kick that's reversed and it sounds like this oh yeah then we got three percent ott on the master just helping tighten it up a little bit and then a little l2 just for loudness and here's once again what that sounds like Anyway, that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, and it would really help you boy out. Also, if you have any ideas for videos or ways that I can improve the content, make sure to let me know in the comments. I'm really out here trying to level up and make my videos the best I possibly can for y'all. Regardless of anything though, keep vibing and making dope music, and I'll see y'all next time. Love you.